Inside Michigan Football is presented by Meyer. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Michigan Football. I'm Jim Branstetter along with John Jansen. And what a thriller in Lincoln, 32-29 Michigan in an absolutely up and down kind of game. But we're going to start with the first half. In the first quarter, in the first half, Michigan had their way, especially stopping Nebraska when they were down ready to score on a fourth down play, and they stopped Martinez. Brad Hawkins did an unbelievable job of pursuit and making sure that Adrian Martinez didn't pick up that first down, and Michigan weathered the storm, right? They dominated on defense, but they did it in an environment that was rowdy. You come out, Nebraska has all the momentum. They travel down the field with 70-plus yards on the opening drive, and it was just an unbelievable job to say, you know what, we're, we're, at, at some point, you've got to draw a line in the sand. You'd rather it be at about the 50-yard line, yeah. but they did it inside the 10, and it was a terrific stop. And the other thing about this first half was the fact that the Michigan offense moved it enough. They did a little of this. They did a little of that. They built the 13-0 lead, and with the defense playing like it is, you said, this is a good way to come into an opposing building that's basically on fire and kind of tamp the crowd down. Well, I think one of the greatest weapons that Michigan has is Jake Moody. Oh. When you get inside that 35-yard line, all of a sudden you really believe you've got three points because he's been so accurate. And in a game like this, especially early on, three points matters. You start adding those up, and then you get into halftime. You know, after scoring a touchdown and a great drive going into half, 13 to nothing, that's huge momentum in, in a game like this. And then all of a sudden comes the third quarter. Yeah. What happened in the third quarter? Nebraska scores 22. I never thought I'd see a Michigan defense in 15 minutes give up 22. I, I never thought I would either, but when you're playing against an athlete like Adrian Martinez, who is a threat to run the ball every single time, who's a threat to be able to go downfield every single time, you're, you're bound to give up some, but you just can't give up too much and you know what in the end they didn't give up too much the big key though too for Michigan is is that they seem to lose guys in coverage blown assignments so wide open receivers uh, a tight end is wide open for a big touchdown then they get a wide receiver who goes in motion gets into the flank and he's wide open those are missed assignments you don't expect from a Michigan defense. You don't, but you also have some young players on defense, and you're going to have some missed assignments from time to time. You'd like them to be hidden. Uh, sometimes they're not. When you have receivers running wide open, you know it's there's a missed assignment by somebody. There was a trips right formation at one point where everybody was in the position that they were supposed to be in at the snap of the ball, but they just got their feet tangled up together. you you got to take a look at that film, and it's obviously easier to do after a win, but you've got to find a way to make sure that you stay on different levels so that you can cover those guys and nobody's running wide open. And were you a little surprised that they didn't use Martinez as much until the fourth quarter, really, uh, to use his unique abilities? I was shocked. I mean, at halftime, and I mentioned this at half, they didn't have a rushing first down in the first half. And when you have an athlete like Adrian Martinez, I would think you would utilize that a little bit more. Whatever Michigan was doing was keeping them out of it, but they obviously went into halftime, made some adjustments, and made sure that they got Adrian Martinez the ball, and they made sure that he had opportunity. Don't go away. When we come back, John Jansen and I will talk about the fourth quarter. You want to talk a roller coaster? That was the fourth quarter from Lincoln. Stay with us as we continue with Inside Michigan Football. First and goal from the Nebraska three. Give it to Haskins. Right up the middle. Haskins goes in. Touchdown, Michigan. That was a... Uh crazy game out there, but it's definitely um, exciting to get that dub, you know, uh, came out there and competed, you know, played, played with heart, a big heart out there, you know, so definitely exciting to get that win. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest and by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store. They give it to Corum. He's around the left end. He's got some room. He breaks it at the 10, the 5. Blake Corum, touchdown Michigan, 29 yards. We came into a dark ride. I mean, Coach Harbaugh mentioned it during the, during the week that, you know, this game's going to be won in the fourth quarter, and it sure was tonight. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. Uh, Michigan, after a third quarter that they'd like to forget, especially on the defensive side, goes into the fourth quarter, and it becomes a back-and-forth football game on the road in an unbelievable environment. And, John, one of the things that Jim Harbaugh talked about with this Michigan team and what he wanted to learn from them, he didn't want to see them flinch. They had plenty of opportunities to flinch, and they didn't. 
Michigan trailed for the first time all season long, and it's amazing that we're in game six, and that's when they first decide to, to, to you know, get behind. 22 to 19, and you, that was the first opportunity to flinch. And then they come back, they tie it, and then no, uh, or Nebraska goes up. There were time and time again where they had an opportunity and, and built in excuses for why they might have lost this game. And in years prior, there would have been times where we'd have been like, okay, that's just what we expect now. Now they've shown that they can respond. Offensively, it was a great job of responding and going down and getting scores, putting points on the board. But defensively, your, their backs were against the wall so many different times. And to be able to create a turnover with a minute and a half <laughs> left was, again, it just shows the resolve of this team. I'm going to talk about that when we get there. But the first thing I want to talk about is you talk about resiliency, not flinching. Whenever Nebraska would score and take the lead, this crowd went crazy, OK? Lincoln was up for grabs. The Michigan offense found a way to come back. And I think that shows a lot about the offense, their ability. They th did it through the air. But Hassan Haskins and Blake Corn, are you glad to have those two guys taking handoff? There was a drive in the fourth quarter with Hassan Haskins. He got hit, needed to pick up a first down. It was third and about six. He got hit, and he picked up five yards by himself. Later on, there was a, I think it might have been the next play, nine yards by himself. And then he ends up scoring the touchdown, which was, I think, very appropriate for him to do. But, and then, you know, I don't, I know we don't want to go back to the first half, but in that drive leading into halftime, Blake Corum breaks off a 20 plus yard run. These guys find a way to get it done. And that's what Michigan, that's what you and I are used to for Michigan guys that make plays. Dax Hill's interception. Guys that just make plays when you have to have plays to be made. And when you say you have to get it done, you got to make a play. Hassan Haskins leaping over oh, a defender on a big long run in a critical point in the game. That's when your big playmakers have to make plays. And did he ever step up? Oh, it was it was a beautiful thing to watch. And you couldn't be happier for two really good kids who yeah. worked their tails off to have that opportunity. And one thing that we didn't mention, last week it was the jump around. This week, I, I think it was ACDC or somebody that they were playing into the fourth quarter. All of the lights go off. I didn't expect it. Maybe they did. But this Michigan team is having fun playing the game of football. They made it their own, and they took over and won the fourth quarter. And that was in a tight, tight game where you'd think you'd be sitting there on the sidelines kind of getting a little bit nervous. They just enjoyed the moment. And then the other one, talk about Haskins jumping over the guy. Blake Corum ripping off that touchdown where he had to make a guy miss. They were struggling and struggling. All of a sudden, Blake gets to the edge, and boom, boom, he's in the end zone. That guy is amazing. He is. He's unbelievable. And one thing that I, I don't think that we've mentioned is this offensive line. They had five different guards play on this uh, uh, today in this game. The ability to continue to communicate, and I think Andrew Vistardis needs a lot of credit because there were times Eric All had a big catch in the in the fourth quarter. Who was there to continue to push him forward? and make sure that if that ball got on the ground, there was somebody there to pick it up. Andrew Vistardis was down the field 20 yards. I, I can't say enough about the way that this offensive line played, the way that they continue to overcome adversity themselves, and just their hustle and determination. Back to the offense for one last second. Caden McNamara wasn't perfect. He wasn't absolutely right on target and wasn't real accurate. But when he needed to make plays, I think about the crossing route to all. I think about some of those throws that he did make when he had to make. He made them. But ultimately, in the end, it came down to a tie game. And Brad Hawkins comes up and steals the football from Martinez to get Michigan in a position where they can go ahead. That's just unbelievable. But it's a play you had to have. And the defense, which had been hurt all second half, made that play to make it happen. And I think one of the big differences this year is the senior leadership at all three levels. Yeah. You got Aiden Hutchinson up front and the plays that he makes, the attention that he he draws. At the linebacker level, you got Josh Ross making sure that those guys are lined up, the defense is doing what they're supposed to do. And then on the back end, Brad Hawkins, I think has done a tremendous job. All three of those guys learning a new defense, Aiden Hutchinson basically learning a new position and excelling every single week. And last play of the game I thought was great. They throw a screen. And Jermon Green comes up and blows it up and keeps the guy in bounds when Nebraska yeah. has no more timeouts. That was unbelievable. That really, I think, 
put Nebraska in such a bind that fourth down play was something they didn't know what to do with, and it was incomplete, and Michigan wins it. And I think that's a great example. Was it perfect? No. But Michigan did what they had to do, and the awareness. We talk about Mike McDonald and his preparation. You could see it paying off in a play just like that where Gamon Green knows, hey, I've got to make the play. That I've got to make it first, but to keep him in bounds as well, he understands the situation and what he has to do to make sure that clock, clock keeps running. And the clock kept running, and you talk about perfect. You know who was perfect? Jake Moody. <laughs> I mean, you talk about money. I mean, he has to make field goals to get a lead. He has to make field goals to win the game. He did, and Brad Robbins kicking the ball from punt formation. He was also great. So, big win. Special teams, offense, defense, they all did it here in Nebraska for the 32-29 thriller. Don't go away. Right now, we're going to go to the locker room. Ed Kengerski's talking with the winning Wolverines. Ain't nothing given. And that's just what it feel like. It feel like when you work for everything you get, then um, the more faith you have in your ability as a person and as a team. We hit adversity and, you know, we responded. We didn't flinch and, you know, it's, I love these guys. I love this team and, you know, we just battled through it and it was a great and glorious victory. It just shows uh, how much we love each other and how much we're willing to play for each other because, you know, you saw we went down and, again, we didn't flinch. You know, we didn't panic. You know, we just played for each other and came out with a win. We're not going to win every game by 20 points. And I think, you know, as we play better teams and we go deeper into our schedule, um, for us to have experience in a tight game is going to be huge for us. The Wolverines are 6-0 and for the first time since 2016, and they just keep having fun, writing the latest chapter that has fans mesmerized, waiting for the big reveal as they flip through the season page by page. Thanks, Ed. Up next, we'll hear from head coach Jim Harbaugh and later our Alro Steel Man of the Week. Martinez is going to run it right up the middle, and he's going to work his way for the first down. Wait a minute, the ball's loose. Michigan's got the football. They're at the 20-yard line. The Wolverines stole the ball. Just practicing what you, with how you play, and that's just that was the perfect example of you know just practicing, you know, punching the ball out, doing it in the game, and it happens. Today's conversation with Jim Harbaugh is brought to you by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Coach, is there anything sweeter than a locker room like that after the game? That's a, it does not get any better than that. Uh, that's as good as it gets. Uh, you guys faced some adversity. You trailed for the first time this season, and your team responded every time. What did you learn about your team? What did you see in your team tonight? If I knew they wouldn't flinch. And the, the fight that they have in them, I mean, they're just, they're just, they're fighters. I mean, they fought for what they, uh, what they wanted and uh, what they believed in. Uh, it's tremendous, tremendous group of guys and uh, the grit, you know, that's just, that's them, that's us. You know, it's, it, it feels great to you know, have a locker room of guys like that. When you talk about grit, offensive line, you play five different guards due to injury, due to whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about what you saw from that offensive line and, and the interchangeable parts? Yeah, we had some things stacked against us uh, in terms of, you know, guys were, uh, weren't 100% healthy, but they gave it everything they had. And uh, bye week's going to take care of a lot of that. But, you know, uh, Zach Center, you know, went as long as he could. Uh, so, did, uh, so did Trevor Keegan. And uh, Reese Atterbury stepped in. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Filiaga, you know, played the, played the whole game right up until, you know, until, until he couldn't anymore. It's just, I mean, just guys were just... Uh, you know, leaving it all out there was, was tremendous. And Brad Hawkins on defense, big fourth down yeah. stop to start the game. Obviously, he recovered the fumble at the end of the yeah. game. Just Be his Hawk. performance. He's just awesome. I mean, uh, B Hawks, one of the one of the tremendous leaders on the team. You know, Dax Hill. You know, so many guys stepped up. One of the greatest interceptions that I've ever seen, and uh, one of the greatest wins I've ever been a part of. I mean, it was uh, tremendous. Jake Moody, okay, the receivers. Uh, you know, Hassan Haskins. I mean, there were some, there were some, I mean, that, what else do you call it than just, uh, you know, big hearts and, you know, tenacious fighters. As I mentioned, there was some adversity in the second half. The defense gave up some drives. What, what changed coming out of halftime for the defense? I, I still got to see the, the first touchdown. It just, just didn't seem like a legal play. Um, didn't, uh, they had at least, they had five in the, in the backfield and the one that, the guy they put on the, on the line of scrimmage, went down for the, a pass, and it's just so. Anyway, that was that got them started. That got all, all the momentum going for them, and uh, then they made a b bunch of great plays. Uh, you know, Martinez is a.
tremendous quarterback. I mean, the catch they made, I mean, they made a lot of big plays. Uh, tremendous type of plays by them. We made a couple tremendous plays more. Uh, you know, that's what it came down to. We just knew this was going to be a, a four-quarter game. And, uh, and when our guys, uh, you know, got down, we were able to – and that was a lot of momentum they had, and to be able to pull it back and, and get it back to our side was was uh, great. It was awesome. Uh, offensively, the running backs, Hassan Haskins, Blake Corum, I mean, those two, there was a drive in there where Hassan Haskins picked up a, a first down, uh, just kept churning his legs. Have you seen anybody run any harder than the two, the pair that you have right now? No, I mean, early in the game, um, Hassan kept his legs churning, got the first down easy by two yards, and they, they spotted him a, a yard short. And... Uh, so we got to review it, review it, review it, and uh, you know they finally, finally did. I mean they, they couldn't even believe that he was, that he wasn't down. But I know Hassan, man, he just, he just doesn't go down. He's a, he's a freak, in terms of strength, uh, and able to, you know, stay on his feet with his balance. So that was, that was huge early. Uh, there was a lot of plays. It was a lot of, a lot of tremendous plays by great players on both sides. And before I let you go, I've got to ask you about Jake Moody. I mean, yeah. does he just have ice running through his veins? The Northfield kid. We love him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you gotta gotta take your hat off to Jake. Jake Moody he was uh, he was he was perfect tonight and uh, needed him to be. Yeah, it was just unbelievable. What a great win. You know, I mean, you gotta you gotta embrace it. You know, the, you gotta embrace the spectacular and you know the uh, kind of some football miracles by some by some great players. Is the bye week coming at about the perfect time for you guys? Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, we've got a couple, a couple high ankle sprains that need to need some time to, to heal. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a good time to get a, to get some uh, rest right here at the halfway part. Congratulations, coach. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Time now for our Al Rose Steel Man of the Week. Here's Ed Ken Gersky. Captain Josh Ross has lived through an abundance of ups and downs during his five years as a Wolverine. This hot start, a just reward for an off season of unparalleled focus. I'm just blessed to be a part of this team. You know, we've been, we've honed in since January of how, what we wanted to do, what we wanted to accomplish and how we wanted to approach this. And we approached it the right way, put the work in and uh, the results are showing. Ross looks quicker than ever, making play after play after play leading the team in tackles through the first half of the season. Not only me, but how my teammates approach the offseason and taking, you know, weaknesses uh, that we believe on ourselves and making the strengths. Um, and I feel that uh, my quickness is definitely um, becoming a strength of my game. And it was simply due to my preparation in the offseason and how, you know, I wanted to change my body and make it better. The other attribute that makes him exceptional can't necessarily be taught, his instincts for the game. Definitely think that was always innately in me. Um, being a, a backer, you know, I was born to do this, and uh, I'm just looking to keep better in my game, keep getting better, um, keep leading the best I possibly can lead, and, uh, you know, keep winning games. When asked about he, Josh kept referencing we. A clear sign his fingerprints, his mindset, and his motivation are baked into the DNA of this club. We prepare for this in our preparation in the offseason every single day, starting in January, on how we wanted this team to be, how we wanted to change because last year wasn't good enough. And this just simply a product due to how we prepare and how we um, developed into the season. And it's only going to get bitter, bigger and better. Ross won the team's blue collar award as a sophomore when he emerged as a true playmaker, and he's finishing his career as a blue blood, one of the best linebackers in recent Michigan history. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Ed Kingerski. Fit one, you know, uh, we still got a long head, long road ahead, but uh, we definitely going to come back fighting. Well, celebrating this victory over Nebraska is a big deal, but Michigan has a bye week coming up, and what a great time to have a bye week after an emotional victory on the road. You get a chance to heal, you get a chance to work, you get a chance to learn. This is a perfect time for Michigan in that bye week. It is. They get a chance to heal up. We mentioned all the guards that played in this game. you got to get those guys healed up. There's always going to be nicks and bumps and scratches and uh, and little boo-boos, but you've got to find a way to get those healed up. You have two weeks to do it because you got Northwestern at home, and then you've got those dirty dog Spartans. And this is an opportunity to take a look at some extra film, not just on Northwestern, but some of the teams that they do have coming up. Absolutely, and don't forget, Michigan goes into the bye week unbeaten, 6-0. and That's not all bad. And while Michigan is off, we won't be. Make sure you join us next week. We'll have another edition of Inside Michigan Football. 
Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. And by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store. 